All right, welcome back, and we are ready for news, but very special guest on Bayou Town tonight, Troy Landry. Before we get to him, we'll let him bring us the news. How about it, Troy? Good, Martin, good. Now we, uh, y'all stay tuned. We're going to have our local news coming up. All right, there we go. With the 4th of July weekend quickly approaching, state police would like to remind drivers to stay safe on the highways this weekend. Okay, Troop C and state police, along with other local law enforcement agencies, are gearing up for this 4th of July weekend. Uh, this weekend is going to be several motor motorists that's going to be taken to the highways and going to different destinations. Once again, we ask that you do not drink and drive. Don't drive impaired. Uh, make sure everyone in the vehicle is properly restrained. Make sure children are properly buckled up. Uh, again, if you see, witness or see anybody driving aggressively or unsafe on the highways, please contact local law enforcement. Troop C and other area agencies will be participating in another no refusal weekend for DWI offenders. Again, we want to remind everyone this weekend we're also implementing the no refusal. That's going to be throughout the state of Louisiana, along with other parishes throughout the state of Louisiana, besides the Troop C area, is going to be participating in a no refusal weekend, uh, which means if you are arrested and you are impaired and you refuse to submit to a breath test, uh, a warrant will be issued and the judge will look over that warrant. If probable cause is there, everything meets the criteria, then blood will be drawn from the individual. In more police news, Terrebonne Parish deputies arrest a woman for allegedly stabbing her husband with a butcher knife. Deputies say the stabbing occurred after the two got into a fight over an argument on whether her husband had cheated on her while he was in jail. Nixon was charged with aggravated second-degree battery. Her husband was treated for his injuries, which were non-life-threatening. In education news, Terrebonne's top educator gets good marks as the school board gives him a satisfactory rating during his annual evaluation. Superintendent Philip Martin and board members met Tuesday night in private for over 40 minutes during his evaluation. Martin says that he is looking forward to continuing as superintendent in the next school year. In business news, Gulf Island Fabrication announced that it has secured three projects totaling over $125 million that will add several hundred jobs at its home yard and a yard in Texas. The three projects include building a dry dock for the LaShip project and two other deep water projects. As many as 200 jobs will be created in the Homa yard, while 500 jobs will be added in Texas. In traffic news, relief is in sight if you cross the Dularge overpass. Wednesday, DOTD officials officially reopened the bridge to vehicular traffic just after noon. The transportation department had closed the bridge when a locking mechanism failed. The bridge reopening should help ease traffic congestion, especially around the Homa Tunnel. All right, there you have it. We are pleased to have Mr. Troy Landry on our program tonight from Swamp People. And I just got to tell you, when my good buddy Kyle Falk was telling me that he had made a connection and we were going to have him on tonight as we went eat and they put it on Facebook, could not believe the amount of people that were stopping me this afternoon and saying, is it true? Is it going to be on tonight? Well, I'm here to tell you it is true. Mr. Troy Landry on the set, we appreciate you driving in the bad weather to get here and talk to the people. And welcome to Bayou Town. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, and I'd like to, before we get started, I'd like to just say hello to Mr. Eugene and Lorene uh, Falls. Uh, I hope Mr. Eugene does better, uh, gets well soon. I heard he was a little bit under the weather. Yeah, he's a little bit under the weather, and you just made his night, too, and my mom, too, so I, good, I certainly good. appreciate that. Let's start off before we get to the phone lines, and everybody's going to want to talk to you. <laughs> Did you ever think that when you started this show, and really going into the second season, that you would become a cult name and the show would be a phenomenon. Did, did you ever think that, Troy? I guess not, man. Never. I'd have never dreamed that in a million years that it would have got as popular as it is, you know. Yeah. I was hoping that the show would do decent, you know, and it would, people would like it a little bit. Uh, but uh, And I figured hunters and fishermen like ourselves, you know, would, would like it, but uh, it's way more than that. It reaches out to 
every culture, every age group, every race out there. I mean, people love the show. You were telling me, we were laughing, waiting to come on the show. Your phone rings at 2 o'clock in the morning. You didn't expect that either, did you? No, man, no. People call, uh, they get out number, God only knows how, and uh, uh, they don't realize the difference in the time zones. And sometimes they'll call at midnight, or uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, or 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they just don't realize. All right. By trade, you're a crawfisherman. Tell us, tell us how you got, and I know you hunt alligators too, but your real job, you, you probably the largest crawfish farmer in Louisiana. Am I correct by saying that? Yeah, not a farmer. I'm not a farmer, but uh, I have uh, two crawfish dogs. We have a small processing plant, and uh, I buy, I'm a buyer. Used so you're to a wholesaler. Right, a wholesaler. I used to be a fisherman, and, uh, and in 1992, I got fed up with my buyer giving me the run around, and I started selling my own crawfish, and uh, now I'm most probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, one of the most probably the biggest buyers in the state, which would make me in the country. Uh, we average most probably about six or seven million pounds of crawfish a year. Mm -hmm. We start buying them in November and buy them till uh, usually till Labor Day weekend, till it's time to start fishing alligators. Wow. Let's roll in a tape of Troy on the boat. So in case you haven't seen it, just in case, you can see what it's all about. Let's roll it in. People that I don't have to tell them what to do. They know what I'm thinking, and I know what they're thinking. You know, we act like a team, and we are a team. This ain't no baby. Watch him, Elizabeth. Oh! I'm going to shoot you, not him. <laughs> all right, so uh, there's a little scene. We're going to show more. Elizabeth, tell the story how you ended up with her, it was a unique story you, you were telling us in the green room. How did you end up with, say, Elizabeth? Let me tell you something. When you, when you told me you were going to show a little bit of the show, I thought you were going to show me singing in the boat or something. <laughs> I thought you were going to I'm going to get you to sing before the night's <laughs> over. You know that, huh? No, no Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth's daddy was a real good friend of mine. He was from Pierre Park, and uh, he made his life uh, trapping. You used to trap furs and alligators years ago. And uh, Elizabeth and I have been friends, and they wanted to put a woman on the show. And uh, they couldn't get permission from her landowner to let them film her. So they came to me, History Channel came to me and asked me if I would be willing to put her in my boat and uh, bring her on the show. And it just so happened, it felt perfect. I needed help at that time. I was looking for extra help. So I brought Elizabeth on with me, and. Uh, she done very well. She was a hard worker. Uh, she's very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she might be stronger than Clint. <laughs> but uh, she does. She done very well, and uh, it didn't surprise me that she done well. I wasn't surprised because she been doing it, you know, as long as I've been doing it. Right now, she has roots. Uh, Don Rich is her what half brother? Don what? Rich and Elizabeth is uh, half brother and half sister. That's right. Uh, Same mama. Yeah, so a lot of people know Don Rich, that's sort, of, right. sort of tied in a little bit. That's right. That's Don Rich's half sister. People didn't, you know, a lot of people most probably didn't know that. Mm -hmm. How much demand is on you to go out? Those of us that are in the industry know you don't just come on with the video. You got to go get it. You got to edit it. How much time does it take for you to do all this? Well, you know, the, the wild season lasts five weeks, and they're famous. They got to get enough footage in five weeks to make 10, 15 episodes. Uh, mm -hmm. Next year, season three is coming. I think they might want to make up to 20 of them. Yeah. And uh, it's hard. They're famous for, from the time we leave our house at uh, daylight. Before daylight, they start filming us till after dark uh, to make sure they get every inch of footage they can. Right. Well, how do you think people relate so well with you? Is it that blue collar mentality that down to earthness well why do you think it is in your own words you know martin i really don't know uh, i can't pick who the fans like or the most or who's their favorite but i can tell the people really like jacob and i my boys and i but, and I, I think uh i think it's because maybe we have more fun with it you know, we're going to catch our alligators. Mm -hmm. i got to catch more alligators than anybody else on that show. Mm -hmm. 
we got to work. That means we got to work harder, my boy, than I, than anybody else. But I promise you, we even have more fun than anybody else on that show. But no, it's not in your repertoire. You, you, you're gonna, you said it just a while ago. You're going to catch the alligators. You know where to go to get them, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You get a feel for just like anything else that you do. Uh, you know, you got a feel for the situation you're fixing to put yourself into. And you know where to look for the big ones. You know where not to look. And uh, it's just something we've been doing for a long time. And you get a feel for it like anything else. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, you ready to go to the public for a little while? Yeah. I thought it would be yeah. fun, huh? Ought to be a good time. You gonna sing going to the break or what? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and I promised my brother I wouldn't say it. I want to win a stake, so you go ahead and say it. What's what? the famous what, line? What you want me to say, Mark? Uh, you're trying to make me say it, so I lose the stake, huh? Spell it. If you don't want me to say it, spell it for <laughs> Starts me. Starts with a C. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot him. <laughs> there you go. So I'm gonna win my stake before the night is over. Damn, I want a stake too. <laughs> We'll be right back. Don't go away.